So, we move on to the link design now. So, I said we will come back to the coherent uh, link separately, but we want to uh, come to design a simple point to point link. We are slowly getting into the networks topic, right. So, we, so, so before we link, uh, before we design the link, what we want to know is uh, what is the desirable performance of the link? How do you want the link to perform? There must be something that quantifies the performance of the link, right. So, first we will des design or define what is the metric of performance, right. I transmit a certain number of bits, you receive, the receiver receives a certain number of bit, bits. When do you say that the uh, receiver, where the transmission is or the communication is successful? When I, when the receiver receives the same bits as I intended to transmit and there should not be any error, right. So, the first performance metric of a, a communication link is a bit error rate, okay. So, bit error rate is what quantifies uh, how this uh, link is working, is it good, is it a bad link, right. If the uh, bit error rate is very, very low, meaning, so you should know what is a bit error rate, bit error rate is the probability of incorrect identification, okay. So it is also defined as, uh, if I want to write it as a formula, bit error rate is, we keep using this formula that number of uh, error bits divided by number of transmitted bits or received bits, but this is actually incorrect. For understanding it is okay that if I, if I transmit a certain number of bits, uh, the number of error bits in that is bit error rate, but you should never quote this as a formula. Uh, simply because uh, transmission is a continuous phenomena, error is something statistical because error comes from noise. So, it is a statistical phenomena, right. And uh, uh, if you were to actually formally define bit error rate, it is this probability of uh, incorrect uh, identification or probability of receiving incorrect bits or probability of incorrect demodulation of incorrect bits, right. Uh, practically, how do you do that? Any probability you practically calculate as a ratio of, uh, you know, the number of successful trials divided by the total number of trials. In that sense, this definition is okay, right. So, if I have infinite trials, if I receive infinite bits, the number of error bits in that, where infinity is as large as possible, right. So, the common criteria in an optical communication system, what is acceptable is 10 power minus 9. The bit error rate should be less than 10 power minus 9. What does that mean? If I transmit 10 power 9 bits, the error should be less than 1. It is not error, should be 1 bit. Should be error should be less than 1 bit. So, if I were to estimate, count, do an error counting, how many bits should I actually count? It is again a statistical quantity. So, you cannot say I should count 10 power 9 bits and get 1 error because getting 1 is not a statistically satisfying number, right. The numerator also should be satisfied, which means I should count 10 power 10 or 10 power 11 or 10 power 12 bits and then correspondingly find the number of error bits. It is a statistical number. It is not that after 10 power 9 bits here comes an error bit. It is not like that. Right. Getting a error free transmission for 10 power 9 bits, I get a 1 error bit, it is not like that, right. It is again a statistical quantity. So, you should count for at least or you should take the measurement for at least 10 power 10 or 10 power 11 bits and then see how many error bits do I have. It is not necessary that the error bits are also equally distributed. It may appear in, if the error bits are appearing in one lump, it means it is indicative of something wrong with the transmission system, you can identify the error. So, depending on the location of when I am getting the error also, it is going to give me some information about the system. But the idea is to find the probability of uh, uh, receiving incorrect bits, that is bit error rate, okay. And we need to be quantifying this bit error rate. And optical communication systems, 
are found to be satisfactory or, or accepted to be satisfactory if the bit error rate that you measure at any given instant of time is less than 10 power minus 9. Only then you say it is an accepted acceptable optical communication system. Okay. Now, this is again a probability. What is it associated with? It has to get associated with uh, why do you have error? It is not that the receiver is uh, you know sleeping and the receiver is unne uh, you know uh, unnecessarily making a mistake or anything like that. Why does a receiver make a mistake in identifying a 1 or a 0? Again, I am talking about only on off key systems right now. Okay. Why is a receiver making a mistake of identifying a 1 or a 0? You put a thresholding and if the noise is crossing the threshold. So, the receiver is making a mistake because of the noise in the system. right? So, you define something, you need to define something associated, a quantity associated with the receiver. Only then you can identify what the bit error rate is. So, the quantity associated with the receiver is we define a corresponding quantity called as receiver sensitivity. That is a minimum average power that is required for the receiver, required at the receiver so as to operate at a specific bit error rate. Typically, that specific bit error rate is 1 e minus 9, 10 power minus 9. So, if my receiver ten sensitivity is uh, let us say 1 microwatt, it means that I need at least 1 microwatt of average power. 1 microwatt of average power would mean typically what is the peak power and what is the, if it is a OOK non return to 0 peak power will be 2 microwatt, 0 power corresponds to 0 roughly. Okay. I need at least this much average power. If I do not have this much average power, it means that every bit that I am getting is a noise or I am not satisfying this 1 e minus 9 condition. Right? So, that is receiver sensitivity. And this also has to somehow get associated with noise in the system. Right. So, we are going to formally uh, understand how to uh, find out this bit error rate in terms of the noise of the system. Because if the system is not noisy, I am less likely to observe uh, an error in the system. So, it has to somehow get linked to the noise. So, uh, this is our picture that I showed you earlier. Right. This is our received bit and why is it wiggly at uh, corresponding to high? Let us say corresponding to y axis shows a signal current and i 1 shows the current corresponding to high state, i naught shows the current corresponding to low state. It can be voltage also, nothing is preventing us uh, at this moment to define it from as voltage. Uh, why is it all wiggly there? Because of noise and corresponding to one state, what are the kind of noises that you have? What are the types of noise that you will, the receiver will see? thermal noise as well as short noise. Corresponding to 0, it should see only thermal noise. If the uh, receiver is operating in a thermal noise limited system, which is mostly the case, the, the extent of noise in the uh, 1 state and the extent of noise in the 0 state is identical. Okay. Now, let us look at the probability now. We are bit error rate is all to do with the probability, right? We said probability of finding an error. So, where is the uh, probability of so so at every point? I'm how do I find the probability? So last time also I showed you. You that's how you quantified the noise also. You draw the histogram of you know the current that you receive at every instant of time. If I keep drawing the histogram. Uh, that will actually tell you that. So, so what is the probability of detecting a I1 now? Can you sketch that? Because finally, I want to write error. Error is a uh, bit error rate is probability of making an error, right? Which means that I have to find out a probability of making an error, uh, probability of identifying a 1 as a 0 or probability of identifying a 0 as a 1. But what is that probability? What should it get associated with? It should get associated with the 
the, the histogram of your noise distribution. Okay. So, if I uh, sketch the probability of detection of 1, where is the probability uh, going to be maximum? Yeah, I want you to sketch on the y axis is uh, signal current now, on the x axis is probability, right. The, this probability is going to be maximum when I am trying to detect a 1 at which current will I get a maximum probability of detect, detecting a 1? I 1, right. So, I get a distribution like this, where this is I 1 now. The probability of detecting a 1 is maximum at a current corresponding to I 1. But at the same time, there is also a non-zero probability of detecting a 1 at this point also. And how do you describe this distribution? It, de it depends on the distribution of your noise. And we said the noise, the noise is large. Uh, so, what is the distribution of thermal noise? In the time domain, in the frequency domain, it is white. In the time domain, it is Gaussian. What is the distribution of short noise? That is also Gaussian provided the photon number is large. If the photon number is small, it is a Poisson distribution. For now, we say the photon number is large and it is a Gaussian distribution. So, how do you describe that distribution? 1 by normalized Gaussian sigma corresponding to 1 root 2 pi exponential minus what is your variable? x minus mu the whole square by 2 sigma square is in general if the dis variable is x, but what is your variable here? What keeps changing? Your current is what is changing. So, I minus mean, what is the mean here? I 1 the whole square divided by 2 sigma 1 square, where sigma 1 square is now a combination of short noise plus thermal noise. Similarly, you can now sketch the distribution of or probability of finding a 0. Where is that probability maximum? At what current is your probability of finding a 0 maximum? Obviously, at I naught current, at this current, I naught current, the probability of finding a 0 or probability of making a decision 0 is maximum. And this distribution is given by 1 by sigma naught root 2 pi exponential minus i minus i naught the whole square by 2 sigma naught square. Why am I writing sigma naught and sigma 1 as two separate entities? Because for a bit 0, there is in principle no short noise, it is only thermal noise. Of course, we can later say that sigma 1 is approximately equal to sigma naught provided it is in the uh, thermal noise limited condition and so on. So, what should be my threshold of, uh, uh, what should be my decision threshold? Where should I keep my de decision threshold? I should keep my decision threshold at the intersection and say that anything above that is 1, below that is 0. And I should make a decision somewhere in the middle of the bit and this point, this is the sample at which uh, I am making a decision. If this point is greater than the threshold, I will decide it is a 0, otherwise it is a 1. Okay, this is my detection process. When will I make an error? What is the probability of error? See here, this is the probability of detection of a 1, but it is lying below the uh, decision threshold. So, if I have a data point or if I have, when I sample, 
at this, this is my sampling uh, time instant. When I sample, if my sampling instant turns out to be as a non-zero probability that it comes out comes below the id, that is where I am making an error. Or I could also make an error one more way when this is the this is the probability that it is a zero. There is a non-zero probability that it is a zero provided or, or, or uh, even when my current is greater than id. So, this shaded region marked in red and marked in uh, blue are the situations where I am making an error. Okay. So, now I need to quantify that and because it is a probability distribution, I can find out the total probability by integrating. 